Resul-i Ekrem ve Nebi Muhterem sallallahu teala ve sellem Efendimiz Hazretlerinin aziz pak münevver mutahar ruh şeriflerine selavat şerifi getirenlerin ahir ve akıbetleri hayrola. Hâle ezvacı ve tahirat evladı Resul-i Esram güzel efendilerimizin sayr-i enbiyazen ve rusul-i fiyan hazıratına evrak şeriflerine Pirimiz Bilal Ahveşe radıyallahu anh Efendimizin Şeyhimiz Sahih Hüseyin Şeyh Abdülkerim Ertuğrul Sen Rabbani Hazretlerinin ve alel husus bu caminin banisi ve bugüne kadar içerisinden gelmiş geçmiş iman mezin kaymlarının ve kahve ehli imanın ervahı için Allah rızası için en Fatiha Euzubillahimineşşeytanirracim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Allah ve melaiketu yusallun alel nebi ya eyvellezine amenu sallu aleyhi ve sellim o teslima Allahumma salli ala seyyidina Muhammedin ve ala ali seyyidina Muhammed Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Allahu ekber Eşhedü en la ilahe illallah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Eşhedü enne Muhammeden Resulullah Hayy aleyhissalam Hayy aleyhissalam Elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah, elhamdülillah Rabbil Alemin ve salatu ve selamu ala Resulina Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecmain. Nehmadullah Teala ve nasafir aşeru an la ilahe illallah vahdehu la şerike lah. Neşeru anna seyyidina Muhammeden abduhu ve habibuhu ve resuluhu sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve azvacihi ve sahib tabi khulafe rahşidin mahadin min ba'di. Ve zemmet ala tahkik, khusef min alameti khulafe rasulina ala tahkik, umar al-mu'minin. Hazreti Ebu Bakr, Umar Osman ve Ali ve ala bakı sahbet tabi'in Ridvanullah Ta'ala aleyhim ecma'in Ya yuhal mu'min l-hazirun Yatakullah Ta'ala ve te'inna Allah'a ma'l ladhina ka wal ladhina hum muhsinun Elhamdülillahi Rabbil Alemin Ve salatu ve salamu ala ashrafil anbiya min mursalin Sayyidina Mevlana Muhammedin ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ecma'in All praises are due to Allah Lord of the universes Allah Jalawala is reminding Bani Adam in the Holy Quran saying Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim I swear by Yawm al-Qiyamah I swear by the day of resurrection and I swear by the nafs al-Lawama and I swear by the self-blaming ego Does man think that we cannot assemble his bones? Yes, we are able to put even his fingertips back into perfect order but man wishes to do wrong in the time before him. He asks, when will be this day of judgment? But when his sight is dazed and the moon is buried in darkness and the sun and the moon are joined together on that day, man will cry out, where can I escape? No, there is no refuge. To your Lord is the place of rest on that day. On that day, man is told the tale of what he has sent forth and what he left behind. Oh, but man is a telling witness against himself, even though he tries to give excuses. Sadaqallah al-Azim. May all peace and blessings be upon the master of Arabs and the Ajam, Sayyidina Muhammad who is saying, whoever recites salawats on me 10 times in the morning and 10 times in the evening will obtain my shafaat, my intercession on the day of resurrection. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik alayhi wa la alihi wa sahbihi wa sallim. And may peace and blessings be upon his noble family and blessed companions, especially upon the four Khulafah Rashidin, Hazrat Ubaqa Siddiq, Hazrat Umar Farooq, 
Hazrat Osman al Ghani and Hazrat Ali al Murtaza and all those who follow them until the last day. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, O believers, welcome to you in the first Juma of the month of Rabiul Ahir. In this month, we find the Urs of great awliya and ulama like our Grand Sheikh Muhammad Baba Samasi and of Ghawzul Azam Sheikh Abdul Qadir Al Gailani and Sheikh Al Akbar Hazrat Ibn Arabi and Imam Al Ghazali and Imam Malik and Imam Ahmad Ibn Hanbal. In this month, we find the Urs of the great Sultan Ulu Hakan Sultan Abdul Hamid Han. And in this month, we find the Hijri birth date of our master, Sahib al Sayf, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibrisi al Rabbani. Qadaslah Sir. May Allah raise their stations and let the Himmat be on us. May we remember those that are beloved to Allah. For Holy Prophet said, When the righteous ones are remembered, mercy descends. May we be under the shade of Allah's beloved ones. Ya Yuhal Mu'minun, O believers, this life is a temporary life. And a day is coming when we will fold up the tent of this worldly life and continue our journey to the reality of Ahirat. A day is coming when we have to stand before our Creator, the one who sent us to this world, and we have to answer for how we lived in this world. Death is the certainty before us, and the judgment day is the promise meeting with our Lord. Our Shaykh Sahib al Saif, Shaykh Abdul Karim al Kibrisi Rabbani, Qadr is speaking to us about the nature of our life in this world, saying, We enter through one door of this world and we go out from the other side. If you don't know the meaning of life, if you don't know what you have been created for, you are in big trouble. Prophets have been sent. Awliya has been sent to remind us why we are here. What is the reason of a man? What is his creation? Man has been created to know his Lord, to worship his Lord. When you are going to the judgment day, before going to the judgment day, entering into the grave is coming to you. Angels are coming and asking, who did you live for? Why did you live? What did you do? How much of the life that Allah has given to you, you have lived for His sake? Now you and I, everyone who is hearing these words, must think about it. And if you are sincere about it, thinking really sincerely about it, do you think then that you are going to become proud ones? Or arrogant ones? Or stubborn ones? Or are you going to attack those who are trying to take you out from the mess that you are in? How are you going to? Impossible. Then intelligence enters to your heart your head. Intelligence forces you to think a little bit because now there is an unknown, something waiting for you, in front of you. It doesn't matter who you are and where you are from. The highest title that you're going to reach, you're going to get, is to be servants. All these worldly titles that man has, you're going to leave it in the world. You cannot take it with you to the grave. You can be the kings of the world, ministers of the world, it doesn't matter. When you enter into the grave, the first thing the angels are asking, do you have your ID card? Did you get your ID card from dunya to ahirat? Yes, I did. What does it say? The servant of the Lord. Hmm. Now you pass. Servant of his ego. Now you're in trouble. Slave to shaitan, you are in trouble. He is in love with dunya. You are in trouble. Look at yourself. You must check yourself. Check your heart. Don't let anybody say anything to you and get fooled by anyone. No, sit alone in your room for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and say to yourself sincerely, look at me. Look at me. Am I really living for Allah? Or am I really living for my ego? Check yourself and you will find out. You will know by yourself. Your heart will scream to you. The sound that is coming from the heart will take all over. You will hear the voices coming from all over. But the 21st century's ignorant and arrogant people 
are covering the sound that is coming from their heart, listening to their ego, and everyone is thinking, I reach somewhere. Where are you going to reach? What are you aiming for? Servants. You have to reach to servanthood. Ibli Allah are giving warning to save us. The friends of Allah can scream at us. They can frighten us to save us. Our Shaykh is telling us that when a man is dying from freezing, from hypothermia, you cannot let him go to sleep. If he goes to sleep, he will die. You have to shake him. You have to slap him. You have to scream at him until he wakes up. That is a mercy to such a man. If you let that man sleep because he doesn't like a slap, if you let the man sleep because he says, I don't like to be screamed at, that means that you're letting him to die. To die in this world is something, but to die and to be in trouble, dunya and ahirat, there is no escaping from ahirat. Holy Prophet ﷺ, yes, he came as rahmatul alamin. And his inheritors are inheriting that rahmat, but it is not rahmat according to what our eyes understand or according to what 21st century Muslims understand following the Jews and the Christians. Rahmat is not Christian understanding of rahmat, hugging and being meek and being mild. Rahmat is to have a heart to save others even if it means that others will hate you. Rahmat means to be like the awliya Allah, to look with the nur of Allah and the awliya Allah do what is necessary in the moment to save those around them. Today, people have wrong understanding of tasawuf and tariqat and Islam. And when they see the sheikhs waking up such a man, they themselves say, what kind of tariqat is this? What kind of mercy is this? Yes, Holy Prophet wasalam, took prisoners from the war and he put them in chains and he was laughing and smiling at them. And they look at each other and they said, look at him, he's looking at us and seeing us in chains and ropes and he's getting happy. Holy Prophet wasalam, replied, Hasha, I am not laughing because I see my enemies conquered by me. No, I'm laughing because I'm seeing with the eye which sees secrets. And I see that I'm dragging people by force away from a blazing fire and a stove filled with the black smoke of hell. And I'm taking them to paradise, to the angel who guards the gates of paradise, to the everlasting garden. And the ones I'm dragging are groaning and getting upset, saying, why are you taking us from danger into the garden and safety? And this makes me smile and laugh. His inheritors, his friends, the awliya, Allah, they have the same mercy to save those who are dragging themselves into destruction. You may not see it. You may think, I'm still young. I did not do anything wrong. You may think, I'm old. Definitely, I didn't do anything wrong. You may say, I've been a Muslim all my life. You may say, I've been in tariqat all my life. It doesn't matter. You are not a doctor. Only the doctor knows. And Hazrat Mawlana Rumi is saying that once upon a time, one Eulia was riding a horse and he saw a man sleeping and he saw a snake go into the mouth of the sleeping man. So the Eulia started beating the sleeping man with a stick and made the man run until he came to an apple tree. And under the apple tree there were rotten apples. The wise man forced the man to eat the rotten apples. The man who was sleeping before said, O oh prince, why have you made killing me your intention? I never did anything bad to you. I never did any zulm to you. If you're mad at me, then just kill me with your sword. I'm so unlucky that you ever saw me. How lucky are the people who never met you. I didn't do any crime or sin. You can't even treat a murtad like this. Look, blood is filling in my mouth while I talk. Ya Allah, take revenge for me from this person. The man kept cursing. 
And the Eulia kept beating him. And finally the Eulia says, now run. Run. And the man ran where the Eulia kept beating him until the man fell down. And the Eulia kept making the man to run and fall down, run and fall down until he threw up. And he saw the snake come out from his own mouth. Then the man fell down and kissed the Eulia's feet and said, You are the angel Jibrail, since you are the protecting friend of merciful kindness. Oh, what a blessing it was when you saw me. I was dead and you gave me a new life. You were running after me like a mother runs, af runs after her child. But I was running away from you like a stubborn donkey. Donkeys run from the master because they are animals. But the owner follows it out of his goodwill so that a wolf doesn't tear it into pieces. How blessed is the one who sees your face or just walks in your street. Or you whom the pure spirit has praised, how much nonsense and foolish things I said to you, O oh my master, O oh my king, O oh my emir, it wasn't me speaking, it was my ignorance. Please don't hold it against me. If I'd known the least about the situation, I never could have said something like that. I would have praised you if you had just told me what was happening, but you acted in silence and you were pounding my head. So my brain became crazy and logic left my skull, especially since my head has little brains to begin with. Please forgive me. Oh, best in appearance and best in manners. Whatever I said out of my madness, let it be forgiven. And the Eulia replied, If I had even given you a hint of what was going on, you would have melted from fear. If I told you about the snake and his reality, the fear would have made you to die. The chosen one, Alayhi said, if I told you the reality of the enemy that is within your souls, even the gallbladders of brave men would burst. They wouldn't travel on roads, nor would they work. They wouldn't even be able to make dua or fast or to pray. They would become nothing, like a mouse in front of a cat or a lamb in front of a wolf, and no strategy or movement will be left for them. So I am supporting you without speaking. I heard you cursing me, but I kept pushing you. And I was making dua for you, saying, Ya Rabbi, make it easy for him. I had no permission to speak about what was happening, and I couldn't leave you. So I kept making dua like the Prophet made dua. Ya Allah, guide the people because they don't know. This is not just a story. This story is teaching us about the mercy of Islam. This story is giving us just a small glimpse of the heart of Allah's friends. They get cursed at, they get blamed, they get hurt by the ones who are helping them, but they don't stop. They continue to help and they continue to pray for their people. They walk on thorns, just like the Holy Prophet ﷺ walked on thorns. This is why Holy Prophet ﷺ said, The Shaykh among his community is like the Prophet among his Ummah. We are walking towards our death, and our destination is our grave. If we enter into that grave with our anger and our jealousy and our stubbornness and our pride, which so many of us, we still have. Don't try to fool yourselves by saying, I'm finished from all of this, young or old. If we go to the grave with all of that, then we are going to be destroyed. Dunya and ahirat. You may say, no, I'm going to ask Madad from the Prophet. I'm going to ask Shafa'at from the Prophet. How are we going to ask Shafa'at from the Prophet when he said, My Shafa'at is for those who commit the big sins when we don't even admit that we have sins? How can we ask for Shafa'at? We must give our hands to someone who is going to rid us of these snakes from inside us. 
We must try to understand the friends of Allah, the inheritors of the prophets, a little bit. They are trying to save us from the anger of Allah. It is not the job of the student to question the method of the teacher. Just like the sleeping man, the awliya could not tell him what was going on. Oh, he would have died with fear. Oh, he would have given up. The same way, we have to trust. <coughs> Otherwise, we're going to lose the way. Hazrat Mevlana is saying, the Prophet wasalam, said, I am like a ship in the storm of time. Me and my companions are like the ship of Nuh. Whoever grabs hold will find guidance. When you are with a sheikh, you are far from ugliness. Traveling day and night in a ship, don't break with the profit of your time. Don't rely on your own skills and footsteps. Though you might be a lion, if you travel the path without a guide, you'll be astray and hated. Beware, fly only with the sheikh's wings so that you may see the help of his armies. At one moment, the wave of his gentleness becomes your wing. Uh, the next, the fire of his jalal will take you forward. Do not imagine that his jalal is the opposite of his jamal. Look at the unity of these two in their effect. This is our way. This is the Osman the Naqshbandi way. This is the way of the Murshid and the Murid. This is the way that brings us to safety in these most dangerous times, in this darkest of the darkest times, in this Ahir of the Ahir Zaman. If you think that you are safe, think again. Because you are going exactly opposite to what the Prophet was saying. If we are in the company of Allah's friends in this life, then we can be in their company in the next life. And then we cannot wait to reach to that sahbat. As Sahib al-Sayf is saying, the believers cannot wait for the judgment day because a believer has nothing to hide. A believer has nothing to fear except Allah. That's why the believer must walk on the Sirat al-Mustaqim, must try to do what Allah and His Prophet wasalam, they are ordering. If you are doing that, then you have no fear. The way to reach to that place of refuge and safety must be in the caravans of Allah's beloved ones. Sultan al awliya Mawlana Muhammad Nazim al Haqqani Kazansir, Shaykh Mawlana, is saying, you ask for the divine presence. You want to reach the world of Malakut, the world of angels. Of course, you will find a caravan which goes to that world and join them. You will follow them. What did the great ones say? Certainly they wanted to be with them, even in the back of the caravan. You can't go anywhere without finding the caravan. There is a caravan to the Divine Presence. The leaders of the caravan to the Divine Presence are the Prophets, alayhim salam. The leader of the Prophets is our Master, alayhi salatu wasalam. Then come his successors, his awliya. Therefore, who looks for the caravan? Who looks for the caravan will find them. If you find one of them, you will join the caravan. By foot or by vehicle, you will reach where they're reaching. Our hope and our effort is to be in that caravan. Tariqat, Dargah, Jama'at, Sohbat. It is all to put a man in that caravan and not to stray out of that caravan. A man can be in that caravan for five years, ten years, twenty years, but if he leaves it before it reaches the destination, what good will he find? He is in loss. The reality of that caravan will be shown in the judgment day. Sahib al is saying, that's why Allah is saying to us, when you are obeying Allah and His Prophet, then you will be with the prophets, with the salihin, with the righteous ones, with the shuhada, with the good ones in the judgment day. And after that, you will be with them. And he is saying to us, 
what good friends you have now. Yes, that's what you need. That's what we need. Not just to say, I accept the Prophet. Accepting the Prophet, وسلم, you must accept his lifestyle. You must take his lifestyle to apply to your life. Islam is teaching us how to live. No believers, we are here to be in that caravan. We are not here to support our egos. We are not here to support our ideas. We are not here to play with words and to play games. We are here to be real. And the reality is that we have an ego and that ego must be trained and must be disciplined and must be put on a leash in order for us to reach to safety. And the reality is that we must submit to our shaykh in order to train that ego. We should give endless shukr that we have been joined to a shaykh who stands straight and makes us to stand straight. He's teaching us with the teachings of the Holy Prophet والسلام, and his companions and his Ahlul Bayt and his inheritors. Listen to Sahib al Sayf, listen to the Shaykh, put his words into your life and live them. Then there is safety. Shaykh Afandi is saying, every word that you say and every action that you do, you're filling up your book. Any good thing that you say, you're filling up your book and you're going to find it on the Judgment Day as a reward to you. Before going to Judgment Day, you may find it in the grave. Any wrong things that you say, any wrong things that you do, you're going to find it in front of you again. Hazrat Yali, radiallahu anhu, karmallahu wajha is saying, I've never done anything good to anyone and I've never done anything bad to anyone. And they said to him, Yali, definitely we know that you didn't do anything wrong to anyone. But we know that you did so many good things to so many people. He said, no. If I did something to someone, and if that person earns something from that, then in reality I'm going to get paid in the judgment day for it, me. So, he had, so I did it to myself because I'm getting paid for it on judgment day. If I harmed someone and that person is harmed through my word or through my action, I didn't really do anything to him again. In the judgment day, he is going to receive my good reward and I'm going to take his wrong things away. So I'm going to be punished. In reality, I did everything to myself. In reality, you and I, we are doing everything to our own selves. We don't have too much time left in this world. Azrael is running top speed. You don't know when he's going to reach to you. Prepare yourself and be ready. Always have your package ready to take off to the other side. The children of Adam are making so many plans, day and night. But one day you are not going to reach to your plans. One day your plans are going to stay and Azrael is going to take you. So if we want to be with those ones, with the prophets, with the salihin, with the righteous people, with the evliya Allah, with the friends of Allah, with the shuhada and the good ones, then we must obey Allah and His Prophet. And obedience to Allah and His Prophet والسلام, is to obey those ones who are obeying them. May Allah keep us with them. This is the Juma day. We're asking help from Allah. We're asking help from the beloveds of Allah. We are asking with the words of Mawlana Jalaluddin Rumi, who is addressing Habibullah والسلام, saying, Ya Habibullah, you are the messenger of the one creator. You are the one chosen by the Lord of majesty who is without equal. You are the delight of the Lord Allah and the highest full moon of creation. And you are the light of the eyes of Allah's messengers and the lamp of our eyes. On Miraj, the angel Jibrail was at your stirrup and you are the one who was standing on top of the nine blue domes of paradise. Ya Rasulullah, you know that your himmat is deprived and you, you know that your ummat is deprived and poor and you are the guide of those who are weak and helpless. You are the cypress tree of the rose garden of prophethood and the spring season of hidden knowledge. You are the rose bush of the garden of shariat and the nightingale of the highest heavens. Shams Tabriz is the one who has the praise of the messenger in his heart. O chosen prophet of Allah, you are my supreme master. We're asking Allah for the sake of that beloved, for the sake of our mashaykh, for the sake of our master, Sahib al to forgive us, to give us strength, to let us to be of service. And for their sake, we're asking help for this ummat 
and asking for an end of tyranny and asking for the return of the Sultan and for the takbir of the awaited helper, Hazrat Mahdi alayhi salam. Amen. Astaghfirullah. 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 Alazim. Alazim. La ilaha illa wa nahi ibrahim wa atubu alayhi. لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وحده لا شريك له لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وحده لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له له الملك وحده لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك من الظالمين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك من الظالمين سبحان كلوس ربنا رب الملائكة توارى سبحان كلوس ربنا رب الملائكة سبحان كلوس ربنا رب الملائكة إن دين الله الإسلام قام صلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله يا على السلا يا على السلا يا على الفلا يا على الفلا قد قام السلا قد قام السلا الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله